let's draw it. Okay, I immediately you see it got a lot right, okay, but it's not completely honoring all of the things we've said, so we'll have to go back and make some changes. Okay, let's see what, let's see what it got right off the bat. Okay, it seems to have gotten the colors more or less right. Okay, so Bob is a diamond, Carlos is a triangle, Alice is still an ellipse. Uh, that looks more or less like a melon-colored line. The edge is green, this is a dotted line, so overall it did pretty well. But let's see if we can, uh, you know, take this to sort of look a little bit more the way we had hoped. Okay, so one of the things that we'd probably like to see, we'd probably like to display the labels here instead of the values. And that's easy enough. We just go to lines, we say mark lines, and instead of with the values, we say with the labels. And there we go. Now we've got friendship markers and sibling markers and all is right with the world. If we want to, we also want these to sort of render in the sizes that, you know, something, maybe something a little bit bigger, right? Um, so you can tell that our, our X factors seem to be working sort of, but maybe it's just a little too small to begin with. So you can always go to size, and we really don't want auto size, right? Um, that's not what we want at all. Okay, what we actually want is these giant sizes. Okay, so auto size will try to size things, um, it, you know, for its own benefit. But what we really want to do is we really want to pull it in. I mean, I want to be able to see these things. Now, we may at this point decide that these, uh, the size is just too large, and that the input file sort of got it wrong. But we can. That's just as simple as uh, going back and changing those values. Okay, so we can do that as we like. Uh, so this is a, a very you know, basic example to uh, basic, some basic examples of the .NET format. Um, let's talk about a few things that can go that can go wrong. Um, and we'll go back to sample.NET because there's actually um, quite a bit that can go wrong even with files that are as simple as this. Uh, one thing is if you have the, an improper format, okay, Padgett is very, very particular about very small things. So even if you have a space between the star and vertices, okay, you will get something that is not at all what you want. Okay, so let's insert a space and let's see what happens. Okay, we load sample two. Okay, and if you notice, this output looks entirely different from the output that we have here. Okay, it's not telling us how many lines we have. Okay, it doesn't look at all correct. Um, so that's telling us that something is pretty wrong. Okay, this file is basically hanging. It doesn't know how to read that. Okay, and that is precisely because, and notice, it hasn't loaded in a fourth one yet. Okay, so that is entirely because of our little extra space here. Okay, so that's not something that we want to do. And in fact, we're going to have to close that to change it back. Okay, because it'll actually hang that file. So one of the things that you'll see, especially when you have a format error in the file, it'll just hang. Okay, so you need to make sure that you have your, from the start of the vertices line to the end of the, the very last edge, I would say try to have no extra spaces where it isn't absolutely required. So no space between the star and the vertices, um, no spaces, sort of no line carriage returns between the different sections, okay? It's perfectly natural for you to want to do that. Please avoid it because it'll make it uh, much more difficult for you to, to get things done. Another thing that Paget does not like are tabs. Okay, so if you, even even here, right, if I insert, if I put, say, a tab between um, this last zero and shape. Okay, let's see what happens to Pagic if we do this. Okay, we go to load it. Okay, it looks okay, um, but let's see what happens. Okay, it actually did pretty well. Um, so I can't really explain why, but one thing that I deeply suggest is that you just don't use tabs, okay? Use spaces, uh, and I would just avoid tabs altogether. It is possible that um, 
newer versions of Paget like this one are more forgiving. But in general, I would avoid tabs. Um, they will cause errors, or they can cause errors, and uh, just generally try to avoid it. Okay, so just use spaces, single spaces between these uh, these arguments, and you'll have a much easier time. The third common error is that you can have a mismatch in the vertices header, um, meaning that you know I have three items here, but what happens if I put a seven there? Okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, I uh, open it up, load in sample two again. Okay, it looks like it read it all. And if I draw it, okay, notice what happened here. Okay, it created four extra four extra vertices. Okay, and it gave them automatic labels and things like that. All right, so this is obviously not what we intended. Okay, so sure it'll read the file, but it's not doing what we exactly what we want it to do. Okay, this will actually work the other way. Um, suppose that I only had two here. Uh, let's see what would happen then. Okay, it'll just give me an error right off the bat. Okay, the vertex number too large or too small. Okay, so it, it's telling me it doesn't like that at all. It even tells me where the error is. Okay, it's telling me that line three is an error, that that definition is an error because it's only expecting two vertices. Okay, so in that case, we get a nice, at least a nice error message, and we can fix that up. Okay, so you want to make sure that your header, your vertices header, matches the actual number of vertices that you're defining. A couple other things to keep in mind. Uh, keywords are case sensitive, okay? So things like color words should be capitalized. Again, okay? one natural question that would come up is how do we know what uh, words are valid and what words aren't valid? With respect to colors, um, the uh, Pagic folks provide us with a nice a list of all of the different colors we have access to, so they're all sort of here. And you'll notice that they all do start with um, capital letters and actually have interior capitals as well, so this is something to keep in mind. Um, but there's really a nice range of colors here, so uh, you should feel uh, very comfortable to explore the different types of um, visualizations you can create. Okay. Uh, finally, you want to make sure, and we've mentioned this before, don't put spaces between the sections. So even though it's very logical to do something like this and possibly even put in some comments here, uh, you will not get a very good um, response from Pagic. And let's take a look at what we actually do get from Pagic when we do this. Okay, notice it only reads five lines. Okay, it's not reading the whole file. So when you actually go to visualize it, you'll get something like this. Okay, again, not the end of the world, but this is a place where when you load it, you can actually um, read what's happening. I'll load it again for you so you can see. Okay, you can actually read what's happening. Okay, and you should notice that something's wrong right here. Okay, uh, we have many more than five lines. Okay, it shouldn't really stop reading there. It should be more like 10 or 11 lines. So this should be a good indicator that something isn't quite right. Okay, so let's go back and fix that. I'm gonna remove these extra spaces and interior comments. And let's get back to a good working state with this file. Okay, that's more like it. We have our 11 lines red, and then when we make our drawing again, that looks pretty much like what we want. That's it for the most part for today. Um, there's one other thing that you that I want to mention before we go. There are many, many, many other options that you can use related to the format. Those options, however, will not appear on your screen. Okay, many of the options, Patrick doesn't really make a distinction between the uh, values that it attaches to the visualization here, the one that we can actually manipulate, and the visualization options that are available for the EPS 
export. Okay, so if you want to export something in a PostScript format, what you'll want to do is you'll want to research those extra sample, right, those extra arguments, okay, and there are many, okay, that'll let you do all kinds of very, very advanced visualization and make really some nice documents and export them into that format. If you want to use those, you'll have to find the relevant portions of the manual and um, practice, okay, so this is sort of, would be sort of an advanced visualization thing. Uh, it's important to say that if you want to just export this view as is, you can just export as a bitmap or um, SVG, however you, you feel that you want to uh, put it out. And you can append it to a Pagic project file. Okay, and you basically, we'll learn about lots of different Pagic files. The project file is sort of a, a parent file that can hold all of them. Okay, so you can actually go and uh, append this to a project that you already have. Uh, but those are more advanced topics and things that we'll do as the semester goes on. This is really just a kickstart for you. And um, have fun with it.